Hello everyone, I'm back with another Sims 4 era house build. So uh, today I'm doing the salt box style house. Um, salt box style houses have steep roofs um, that show off the second floor on the front and then it goes down to the first floor on the back. Um, one of my biggest issues with Sims 4 is when you do that kind of thing, uh, the roof doesn't match very well, but uh, you'll see that later. Another feature of the salt box style house is small windows and uh, large red door. I think the next few eras do have large red doors, including the Gregorian houses. Um, so I start off with uh, pretty much creating a large square uh, because they're very square shaped. Not very many asymmetrical features that we see nowadays in our architecture. At first I was going to start off putting on kind of like a side room because I know some of the pictures I looked on the salt box style houses had that side room but I decided it was a little much for the small sized um, area that I was using. So here I am putting the second floor as you can see it's much smaller than the first floor so that we can have that steep roof sloping down to the first floor. So here's where you're going to see me having issues with trying to match the first floor roof to the second floor roof and it gets very frustrating and I end up kind of just dealing with the clipping that you have. Um, again, you're going to see me fiddle around with it. I tried making it larger. I tried uh, deleting the top roof and just having the uh, first roof go all the way through, but then you add the... Uh, top point of it not matching with the other points so I go back to having two separate roofs um, one on the second floor and sloping down and then the one on the first floor sloping up uh, here you see me not being able to match it even when I change uh, how extended the roof tiles are um, I think I spend most of the time messing with this roof before I really get into the build I think the closest I got was about here. Um, it was like when you lowered one, it went a pixel below and you couldn't get it perfectly set on the pixel, the area that I wanted to. So I kind of just bite the bullet and take a break from it and go to choosing the exterior um, paneling. I know that a lot of the pictures I had either had our normal paneling or like these wooden shingles. Um, some of the older ones especially had more of the wooden shingles. So I end up going with that and then I think I end up changing the color to gray so that it kind of was less, I don't know, blah looking I think is the best way I can put it. So I raise it a little bit. Most of the houses didn't really have a large foundation so raising it a little bit and kind of putting the black rim on that. So it kind of matched the rest of the house. I didn't want to mess around with the foundations too much because I feel like there's more. Choosing the door, I think I go through like three different doors because most of the pictures had pictures of either a red door with like a triangular um, stone thing above it. Um, don't know the proper term for that. But uh, I end up just kind of leaving it off and putting the pictures in. Now, originally I had these gray windows, but a lot of the pictures I ha saw had red, like, inner um, panes, and then, like, the exterior of it was gray. But I think the Sims only have, like, red with the inner and white on the outer, and it didn't really match the house. So I ended up just doing the red window panes after messing around a little bit. Again, I go back to trying to find a door that matches. Um... Again, end up going with the red door. I don't believe I end up selecting that one in the end because it was rounded and a lot of the wind or the doors in the salt box style houses were um, more square except for the triangular top. And Sims I know has some, but I think they were too large for what I wanted. So I have a little bit of an extended porch because the picture that I looked had a few steps to a small porch. So... I put that in to kind of give it some more look. So I think I end up going with one of these more square doors. This one I liked, except it was too... I didn't like the white um, exterior to it. So I end up going with this red door. 
I didn't really think the windows matched with it as much. So you'll see me change the, the red to the red. Some terrain painting so I can put some bushes. I knew I wanted a tree. I'm not having much in the yard um, with this house because it's none of the pictures really had much. Like they had some bushes around the house. There was no back patio. I know some of like the newer versions of salt box houses have a back patio, but I think that's more common with uh, today's houses with the backyard and stuff for kids to play. But these houses didn't really have a need for it. Some of the larger salt box style houses had a um, kind of a hall that led to like a garage or at the time I would assume stables. And here you again see me change the uh, window pane to red. I was trying to find one that had like the you see the inner side being gray and then the exterior being red and I couldn't find anything so I just stuck with the red and gray. So I'm changing the color of all of the windows. I left the top window, which is a completely different window, gray. Because they all had it. And um, I didn't want to change those windows. As you can see, those bottom windows are not completely under the top. And that was something that's very common with salt box size uh, salt box style houses they didn't have the the third window on the bottom completely under the second window so here I am kind of adding some landscaping because I felt like it was kind of plain and giving under the house some dirt look to it oh this is what I always have to do with plants because you obviously can't place the plant under the trees unless you use move objects. And I do like the move objects sheet because it makes the plants more realistic when it's kind of surrounding the tree base because you usually have some sort of foli foli foliage. Uh, pathway. One thing that I don't like about The Sims 4 is you can't really get, like, it doesn't match to anything. Like, that pathway just ends at the uh, property line. I wish you could go into the world and go and paint paint some of it so that it kind of goes to something but you can't so um that's kind of what you get now I'm kind of laying out the the floor plan unlike my last video which was the log cabin it was really easy kind of to lay out where I wanted things I have the dining room and kitchen on the right side of the house and then the living room on the left and it was very easy to choose where I wanted the um, frames and the doors. I ended up raising the choosing. I knew that I needed to put those windows in a place where I could have the cabinets go under them because that was going to be the kitchen. And so I left them there for now, but I'll go back and fix them. So another feature of salt box style houses is they had a large chimney down the center of it. But thinking about that, looking at the interior my staircase is right where that fireplace would go. So I kind of put it a little bit off and put a fireplace on both levels. This is where I end up choosing to lay out the top, um, which I have two bedrooms and two bathrooms. This was a little bit harder to lay out because of my placement of the windows. I wanted to split it directly in half and then have like the bathrooms there. But then I realized, oh, there's a window there and you can't really move. I, I didn't. I didn't have the choice to move the windows where I wanted them because they needed it aligned with the windows on the first floor. And they had to be very symmetrical looking because salt box style houses, the exterior of the front is very symmetrical and perfectly lined. Another feature of these houses um, is that steep roof pitch as is a holdover from the days of thatching. So, um, The reason they go with wood shingles instead of thatching is because it was easier for rain and snow to slide off of it um, than the thatching. Also, it lasted longer than thatched roofs. Um, so that is kind of a major feature. So here I am kind of choosing the painting of the walls. I ended up just going with something simple, kind of modest. Uh, I didn't want something too uh, old looking because my vision is they kind of remodeled this. 
Um, a lot of the original salt back box houses survive and many of those are now museums. So think of this one as like built like that style, but, uh, remodeled. I gave, uh, the wooden interior floorboards because I don't think they would have fancy carpet or marble or stone or anything like that. So I just simply went with the dark wood to match the exterior of the house and kind of the theme of the house is more dark colors used. I know most people would rather the lighter muted tones, but my style is dark blacks and whites. I didn't do as much black and white because I felt like that wouldn't match the windows as much. So here I am working on the dining room. This was clipping through, so I moved it, but I didn't want to have to go and change that dirt patch that it was under. So I kind of twisted around and put it as close to the wall as I could. I decided I was going to put a fireplace there, but decided that it, um, a end table and a painting would be more suiting and less cluttery for the room. So I sized up that picture, put it there, and then this is where I'm changing kind of the, the placement of that window, which is fine. I wanted to make sure it wasn't completely under the window above um, because it made more sense being centered. So I put a plant in that corner. I end up putting something else in the uh, left corner there. Uh, but that's when I was working on the kitchen, looking at some of the stuff. I wanted to put some curtains in here to give it more decoration and less of an empty feel. So I ended up putting these see-through ones to kind of decorate in here, make it a little bit more elegant. Your dining rooms usually are nice. Like We have a kitchen uh, table, and then we have our dining room, which we're still working on. All right, so then I noticed the bathroom did not yet have a uh, floorboard, so I put that in. Made a small half bath, didn't want it too big. Uh, so you have the sink, toilet, light, and then I realized, oh, I need to put these exterior lights because a lot of the salt box houses had those exterior lights next to the doors. Then this is where I go and um, put in the cabinets and realize, okay, these windows are too low, so I'm going to have to go through every window on the first floor and raise it. And I end up raising the ones on the second floor as well um, because I needed – it to fit better with the house because if you'll see when I do do that um, it doesn't match very well so putting in cabinets I always like these because I don't know a long pantry I always forget though if the when you lower the walls if it shows that longer pantry I wish that when you lowered the walls it didn't get rid of these overhead cabinets because it's like what's the point of this decoration when you get rid of it, when most people play with the walls down so they can see better. I know some people are maniacs and play with the walls up. I noticed that it didn't line and I realized that because I move objects on, I put a cabinet on top of a cabinet, so fix that. Extending these cabinets all the way across, realizing it didn't really work so well. So I move one of those windows over. The back and the front, you couldn't really move too much, but the side ones, it didn't really matter, especially for the first floor. As long as that one, the middle window, didn't align with the one above it from pretty much every salt box house I looked at. With this house, different from my last house, I did put more kitchen decoration that I like to do. I went through all of them because I did not put the hidden objects cheat on. So I didn't have to sift through a bunch of stuff. So I kind of went through kind of looking at different things that might work. And then I noticed that there was like a cabinet with plates and stuff that I ended up putting in that corner in the dining room, which you'll see here soon. Yeah, I literally check every single thing to see if it's something that I'd want so I don't miss anything. Because there's a lot of little detail clutters that... When I used to build houses as a kid, I never really paid attention to because I felt like, oh, why would you have clutter? But it's more realistic with clutter. Um, nobody has a perfectly um, empty kitchen. Here's I'm putting the plate decoration in there to fill that room a little bit more. Nobody has a perfectly like clear cabinets. You have something, usually whether it be paper towels, spice rack. I have a cabinet for all the spices that I put um, that we cook with. But, I don't know, it gives you some more lived-in feel. Maybe if it's, like, a brand new house that you just move into. But I don't think many people, when they download these houses off The Sims, go and 
add clutter. Unless they're doing like a remodeling build or something like that. Oh, somebody liked one of my old builds. Um, if you want to see some of the other builds I've done, I've also done some renovations. So I have like the Nookstone build. It's from my other YouTube account that I no longer have access to and can't log into. Um, but the Nookstone and then a few others are on my Sims profile, which is Smashly Brewer on the Sims Gallery. So I'm putting in um, curtains here, and I didn't want the curtains to be too heavy, but I feel like they don't have enough different types of curtains of different lengths. Like some of them are too short and too small, and some of them are too large. And nothing is, anytime I put in curtains, then nothing is perfect for what I want. But you do the best you can. So then I was putting in kind of a reading area there, so I put a bookcase next to the fireplace. And then I end up putting like a reading area in that corner. I didn't know what else to do with the rest of the space. So I kind of left it a little bit open so I didn't make it too cluttered because I do have an issue of doing that. You'll see in the upstairs bedroom at first it was really cluttered because I had two um, chest of drawers. My mindset is, okay, one person's using this chest of drawers. The other person's using this chest of drawers. But it was just too cluttered, especially with how small the bedrooms are. So I ended up not doing that. I was thinking about putting kind of like an island here, but I wanted it to be diagonal and I just couldn't get it to look right or it was like too big because these didn't match up perfectly. And when I did get them to match, it was just too small because it was curved. So I was like, you know what? We don't need this island. I don't like when things don't line up either and it wasn't lining up with that... Uh, that archway so here I am going and raising all the windows on the ex uh, exterior or upper floor um, putting in the bedroom now my issue with this is putting it in where I knew that the sims had room to get around and this bedroom is such an odd shaped bedroom so I end up cutting out a section of the bathroom to make room for the bed then you have me putting in the different cabinets I end up messing around with that a couple of times so I put one in that corner and then I put one in that little nook there um, matching the wood of the two cabinets didn't work very well so again end up just going with one instead of the other and I don't think any of the things that I did end up choosing matched with the actual wood of the fireplace but it's not really a big deal I guess because nobody unless you're like buying everything of a perfect set um then it won't match perfectly especially with a fireplace wood you kind of just kind of have to deal with what you got so putting in some lighting and tables I end up going with some fancier nicer ones with cabinets because I think the wood matched better with the rest of the room Thinking it was too cluttered, so I removed that, put a mirror, and I think I put a plant in the other corner. That's another thing. I feel like all the plants are either too large, too modern, or just too small. So finding a plant that's perfect size, like the curtains, is an issue. Putting in a bathtub with a shower. I, I assume most bathrooms that have like a bath and a shower, you have both or you have a shower. You don't just have a bathtub. Um, maybe in those days the shower wasn't really as common and you had like a bathtub that you brought in boiling water and then put it in the tub and washed yourself. Um, but I'd assume something that's remodeled would have a bath shower or um, something like that. I think the kids bathroom though only has a bathtub. It does not have a shower and what I end up choosing because of the placement of the window. Plus, I don't know, kids don't really take showers as much. You're going to bathe them and it's easier to bathe them with a bathtub than not. So I decided to make it a, a, a kids bedroom with a bunk bed. So a small family, two kids, parents would live in this house. I always scale down these, uh, these 
dollhouses. I feel like The Sims 4, they decided to make them, like, six blocks or six, like, spots. And it just is too much. So if you scale them down, it's The Sims will still play with them and it doesn't have any really weird clipping. I saw one of my favorite YouTubers use that. Put in some uh, a rug to kind of give it a little bit more of a lived-in feel. And here I am putting a bathtub in the bathroom, moving the door over so that I could put the sink and toilet on that side. Because the bathtub faces one way and I couldn't have it face the other way. I don't know if they work if you put it the other way. I haven't really tested that. So I made sure to put it the correct way and the way the arrows are um, facing. Another thing that I did with this build compared to my last build is I put some more like clutter items in the bathroom, including the toothpaste and toothbrush uh, thing. Um, I did put toilet paper this time in all the bathrooms, except maybe the first floor bathroom. Oops. So uh, that concludes the build. If you want to get the build, you can find me on Smashly Brewer. Thank you for watching.